Welcome to the Run for God Run Club, where you will find God in a runner's space. Welcome to the Run for God Run Club. This is your one stop each week to be motivated and inspired to get off the couch and onto the running trail where you can, in turn, inspire others to do the same. Let's learn, laugh, and leap into running together, giving God the glory for what we're able to do in His name. I'm your running host, Dean Thompson. It is, as always, a great day to be a runner. We have got a special treat for you today. If you spend three seconds on the Run Club Facebook page, you know this lady that we have as a guest today. I'm so excited to present to you Angie Hawkins. Hey, Dean. Thank you for having me. Man, it's so great to have you here. I'm excited to be here. Thank you so much. That is awesome. It's funny how God works and just brings stuff together and you live close enough and it's awesome. I'm just so glad you're here. Um, My pleasure. Yeah, way better than Mitchell. Good Lord. (laughs) He would expect me to say that. I'm sure he would. Yeah. 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 Um, now, Angie's going to tell her own story as she has written it, which is going to be exciting. She is a runner who never thought she would be a runner. Right. Uh, and today, we're going to share her story of struggle and redemption. Uh, and then, I'm going to tell you why I think the word contentment is for the birds. <laughs> Looking so, forward to that. Yeah. So, last week, we had Andy Meyer here. Talking about injuries, um, did you find that interesting? I did. I, I really enjoyed listening to Coach Andy and, and um, just all of his information. It was just really good. I, I love learning about the body, and unfortunately, I've learned so much about the body through injuries. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, no, he, he was he was very intriguing and to, to pay attention and everything. So I, I enjoyed it. Thank you. Yeah, injuries are a tricky, tricky thing. Yeah. Um, and and when you're trying to help somebody with an injury, it's even trickier. Because you don't know how somebody feels. Somebody can explain to you how they feel, sure. but you don't know. You know, it's a sharp pain. This right, I, the ones that get me the most, and the college girls are really bad at this. My knee hurts. Well, where does my knee hurt? And they go, they point, and it's like their whole knee. The whole knee. They, put, they point yeah. the whole, the whole, this right here. It's, it's right here. Yeah, I know you said the knee, but I'm, right, 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 <laughs> right. Uh, One of the times, sorry um, to interrupt. When I first started um, with Run Club, I had sent you an email in regards, and I know you won't remember this in regards to my hip hurting over the past year. I've talked about my hip a lot, and that was the hardest thing. You were like, "Where does your hip hurt?" And I'm like. I don't know. You're not here in front of me. I can't point it to you. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. yeah, it's hard to hard to say. Uh, and and, and I, I just can't even disorders. imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, uh, and of course, over the years, I've been pretty fortunate. I've run just about every day for almost ten years now, and um, I've been fortunate to stay out of major injuries. I've had all sorts of minor things. I've had plantar fasciitis, and I've had knee issues, and I've had hip issues, and. Hamstring. I had a lot of stuff, but it's always stuff that I can run through and, and get through. And um, I did have a stress fracture in my femur, of all places. That's amazing. Back, uh, it's been about twelve years ago, I guess. Um, and I went in, and the doctor found this stress fracture in my femur. And I remember him looking at me, going, now "You're a runner, right?" I'm like, "Yeah." Runners don't get stress fractures in their femur. I'm like. Well, this one did. Right, right. <laughs> Sorry. Chalk it up to a new one. I, I didn't mean to be different, but but I am. Coach Andy talked about the girl that um, ended up having a stress fracture, and then she ended up breaking her leg during the, the run. Mm-hmm. That was amazing. I, I hadn't really ever thought about that. And so we have to really pay attention to those little aging, or uh, the nagging little aches yeah. to make sure they're not something larger, but don't overreact react on those also. That right? is absolutely right? Yeah. true. Yeah. yeah. So good for you, though. That's the, really the... I've been fortunate. I've either been fortunate, or I'm just too stubborn, dumb, or just maybe just <laughs> right, numb right. to uh, to have an injury. Um, and you know, I've always said I don't have time for an injury in- anyway. No. You know, no. uh, who has time for that? Yeah, I mean, I've got uh, I've got. I need to make a dentist appointment, an eye doctor appointment, uh, and I've been putting those off for months. Yeah. And so, uh, uh, me too. Yeah, the injury's got to wait. Uh, I got I got stuff. To, I, I don't have time for recovery. Me. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah too much that, to do. Too backlogged. <laughs> Uh, so you've had some pretty serious things yourself, correct? I have. I yeah. have. Um, and I try to find the silver lining. Um, and, and like, you know, with silver linings, you, I broke my ankle as a child, had surgery, and then I it, it led to another thing. And then I um, ended up breaking my tailbone in 99, which led to a torn meniscus and surgery with my meniscus, you know, on and on and on. But, you know, and it's interesting because you look back on it and you learn so much and you just grow stronger. And it's like, if I can get through that, I'm fine. Yeah. I'm yeah. Fine. 
Yeah, it I makes think, it makes the minor things seem a lot more minor. Absolutely, don't, doesn't absolutely. It? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've I've been um, living with herniated discs uh, for two years now in my neck, mm-hmm. and you know, and in the beginning, I thought it was going to be the worst thing ever. I mean, I thought I was going to be paralyzed forever, and it's just a matter of of knowing the difference between what's pain and what's just uh, discomfort and whatnot and learning to, to pay attention to those pains and yeah. Yeah, and you get on the internet and you look that up. Oh, Dr. It'll, it'll Google scare has death. scared me. Yes, yes. Yeah. I've stopped going to Dr. Google. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> True. So we had a trivia question last week. Mm-hmm. And the trivia question was, there is a specific term for something that happens usually between 18 and 22 miles of a marathon. What is it called? Now, did you know the answer? I knew this one. I didn't All have to right. look this one up. Yes, yes, yes. Um, what is it? The wall. You hit the hit, wall. Hitting the yeah. wall. Or some people call it the bonk. Yeah. Uh, cyclists like to call it the bonk. Okay. It's a little bit different for them. Yeah. But yeah, um, but yeah, hitting the wall is, is, uh, is really a tough thing uh, if you've ever been through it. And if you haven't run a marathon, you've probably not been quite through hitting the wall. Um, hitting the wall is a... It's a unique experience, for sure. Sure. You know, the body uses just a, diff- a couple of different forms, actually several forms of energy, but a couple of main ones. Um, and one of those is that we use fat. Um, but when we use fat to burn as energy, we can our our, our exercise can only be so intense. It right. has to be okay. a low in, lower intensity in order for us to continue to burn fat and just live off of burning fat. Um, when we're running, it's a pretty metabolically demanding uh, physical thing to do. And so we have to, to, to use the aerobic process and then the, the glycogen is what feeds that process. And so if we don't have enough sugar in our body, mm-hmm. um, glycogen, glucose is the most uh, abundant form of that, um, then we, we just start shutting down. And sure. what happens in running is we get to that point where it just it kind of all the energy systems kind of tap out or almost tap out all at the same time, and you the motherload just kind of yeah. shuts off. <laughs> yeah, you go from you go from uh, you know I'm just hurting a little bit. It's a normal race, and I feel like uh, you know toward the end of a race, to all of a sudden you feel like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I can put another leg in front of the other one. Right, right. Like like your mind doesn't even think anymore. Correct. Yeah, I, mean, it, it, it really, I can't imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah yep. Um, so essentially, you you kind of run out of gas. Um, sure. But you have a lot of fat, so there's energy there. There's energy there for you to use. Um, It just doesn't burn as efficiency, so you don't have any choice but to slow down. But to slow down. And and very often to walk. Now, is that in almost, I mean, if you're not properly fueled, clearly, Mm -hmm. but does almost everybody hit a wall Mm -hmm. at some point? Okay. Yeah. Just because your body can only store so much? Right. Okay. Right. Um, even professional runners yeah. um, get to a point where it suddenly gets hard. If you've ever watched like the Boston Marathon or the New York Marathon or whatever marathon on television, you'll see that a lot. You'll see these big packs and you'll see this, they're running together and then all of a sudden there's a guy that was there that's gone. He's yeah. not even, it's not like he faded back slowly. He just, boom, exactly. he, he like, went away. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's probably what happened to him. So, um they don't. It's it's not as as bad. Usually, it happens. Um, they say I've done some studying on this, and <clears throat> your body has enough energy basically for about an hour and forty five minutes. Okay. So yeah, yeah. for an hour and forty five minutes, you don't really have to have anything else. Now it depends on a lot of factors as to whether or not sure. that's completely accurate or not. Um, so typically, you don't hit the wall before an hour and forty five minutes. Um, and with the professionals. They're not running much longer than an hour and forty five minutes. Right, right, so, right, right. Um, so it's a lot easier for them. And that yeah. that that's just such a, a dream. That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's let amazing. me tell you, when you hit the wall, there's no mistaking it. You don't go, well, was that the wall? No, you go, Oh wow. that's the yeah. wall. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, Shazam. So, so if you've never run a marathon, you've probably not experienced it. Um, it'll give you a whole different perspective on what it means to have no energy because we all the time, we all like to talk about how we, we lack energy to do this, we right. lack energy to do that. And um, if it's from hitting the wall, <clears throat> it's a whole different lack of energy. Right. Completely different. Um, and I, I guess <clears throat> myself, I've been there, I guess, in most of the marathons I've run. Um, I've, I've hit some form of the wall, sometimes way more severe than others. Um, <clears throat> the fastest marathon I ever ran, I. I kept waiting for it, 
and it never really hit me hard. I just That's gradually nice. got and and some I did something right that day. I don't know what it was. Over the past um, a few weeks or so, um, some of the podcasts or you and Mitchell have talked about certain things that that drain our energy while we ride. And one of mm-hmm. them is wearing sunglasses. If you don't wear sunglasses, how mm-hmm. even your eyes are fighting. I never even knew that. So there's yeah. so many factors. I mean, running is simple. It's one foot in front of the other, but it's all the other behind the scene things that it's like you you. But uh, anyway, I just yep. thought that was interesting. Uh, the the things that burn our energy, yeah. use I, our energy. Yeah, I've always liked the uh, the, the the quote, and I think it. It's, I want to say it's Steve Jobs, but I'm not positive of that. He he asked the question one time: How hard is it to be simple? Right. Yeah. And and that's really running in a nutshell. Is running really is simple? Right. Um, but it's hard to make it simple. We in in dieting and things like that, and and I mean dieting not as in I'm going on a diet, but your food, your your intake. Mm-hmm. We try to, again, the 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 searching modes on the computers put way too much information, and we get information overload. Mm-hmm. So we have so much. It's like just keep it simple. Yeah. Just just let's focus on today, and today is this. Sure, have a plan, but yeah. um, I would imagine that's the same sort of thing. Don't overthink it and just just go run. Yeah, absolutely. That's kind of my newest thing. Stop thinking so much, Angie. Yeah, <laughs> yep. that's, that's a great. It's great advice, and and I'll tell you, <clears throat> I see that all the time with with all different runners from every ability. Actually, some that overthink and some that some that underthink yeah. too. There's you can go both ways, uh, but it, it's sort of like I've, I've I've likened it to this in the past. When I learned how to drive, my mm. mother made me learn how to drive on a manual transmission mm-hmm. car because she said, you need to know how to drive a manual. And, I, and it makes a lot of sense. Sure. And I look back on it and I think what, what a blessing it was sure. to do that. Yeah. But I also remember being stuck on those hills and her sitting in the passenger seat and going, just try it again. <laughs> try it again. <laughs> can, like, I, can I tell a, a quick story yeah. here? So um, when I was learning to, to drive, Patrick and I were dating as kids. And um, Patrick's my husband. Yeah. We're going to talk about him. And uh, he lived a ways away. And in my house, we didn't have, that's my car, that's dad's car, that's, you know. It was whoever's leaving takes the first car out of the driveway. We're not jockeying around cars. Yeah. And um, there was four cars, four people. Well, it always ended up, we had two that stick shift. And Patrick would always be like, well, you're coming to get me. But I can't. And he's like, yes, you can. And I would take this back road and say, and it, it, if it took too long, because we didn't have phones back then, if it took too long, he'd get in his truck and he'd come find me. But ultimately, that's how I learned how to drive. I stick love shift. Patrick. I do. Yeah. I he's a mess. He's like, do it. He'd be the one to push the kid into the water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but that's You'll be fine. fine. But, but in the long yeah. run, now you drive that same car yes. and you don't even think about everything that you're doing. Yeah. You're doing something with two, two different yes. things with yeah. your hands and two different things with your feet. All at the same time, you're paying no attention to it. Right. Well, the idea in running is is that if we can get efficient at it up front, then it gets to the point where it really is simple. Right. It really is not a, a very difficult thing to do. Where, where I think I spend so much time thinking, okay, breathing. Okay, are you foot striking mm-hmm. correctly? Okay, the hill's coming, so you dip the... Just go enjoy it, Angie. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what he keeps telling me. Yeah. Go have fun. <laughs> that's true. That's true. That's true. And you know, I've learned a lot of things the hard way. I, I tell you about my first marathon. <laughs> right? Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of school of hard knocks, knocks kind of guy. I'm with you on that. Um, my first marathon. I was I was young, um, and I just I was I was out of college. No connection to any coaches. Nothing. Well, the longest race I'd ever run was a half marathon. I had never even thought about running a marathon or what you would do to run a marathon or anything like that and so that half marathon that I had run in the past well I didn't I didn't drink any water I didn't take in anything during that time because I didn't need to because the race wasn't really long enough for me to need to do that and so uh, I went to this marathon and I'm thinking well water stops are for weak people (laughs) (laughs) and so I ran right through every one of them uh, no, I didn't eat anything, I, and I never ate anything before a race either at that point. And so I didn't eat anything before the race. I ate nothing during the race. I took in no water during the race. That's insane. And um, I, I walked most of the last 10K of that marathon. Now, I've never walked in a race in my life right, up to this right. point. But at that point, I didn't have any choice. I was so bad that I could see the finish line and was still walking because it that's how bad my body felt. And so uh, you didn't actually walk over the finish line, though, did you? I didn't. No, because okay, I mean you can't do that. 
Yeah, no, I, 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 I got <laughs> I mean, all I can, could. But <laughs> I'll tell you how impactful it was to me that that day. I'm actually going to run that exact same marathon this in less than two weeks from today. That's the actually one by you're the time training for. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. By the time this comes out, it'll be I think maybe the following weekend. Anyway, it's very soon, and um, I can show you on the sidewalk the exact spot where I was laying when I, after I finished that marathon because oh I got through and I just laid down. I was like, I'm done. Oh my I'm done. Goodness. Lord, come take me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready to meet you, Jesus. Uh, so, um, the reason why I know a lot about running today is because of all the dumb mistakes I've made in my past. Uh, well, I'm, I'm grateful that you've made those mistakes and you're, you're, you're helping us not to make those mistakes uh, if we listen. Hey, I want to tell everybody out there about something. I, I've had this question come up a few times, and so I want to clarify. Sometimes folks are looking for our Thursday night topics. Uh, hopefully, everybody is tuning in on Thursday nights and watching the Thursday night live sessions. And if you can't be there live, you're going back and you're watching those later. Um, they get a lot of a lot of views, so I, th- I think everybody is doing that. But sometimes folks have a hard time finding those. Um, they say, where, where can I find that? Well, what we do is we tag those Thursday night videos um, as a, a um, what do you call them? A um, topic. Topic. I was say title. Uh, yeah, topic. We, yeah. Okay. We, ta- we tag them. There, there's, there's a place on the Facebook page where you can say topic, where you click on topics, and it'll bring up those topics and the Thursday night. You, you can see one for Thursday nights. So you can find any Thursday night session. And you can kind of go through those Thursday nights. And if you're wondering about a particular topic, we may have already covered it. And sure. it may be something yeah. you can go back and look at. So. Yeah. Um, just recently, uh, there was somebody that, that asked about an injury. And I even suggested to go back and watch each either Coach Dean or, or yeah. uh, um, Coach Andy from last week. And um, But there are often times that I'll even go back because I take notes. I'm a note taker. Yeah. So if it, I'll take notes and I'll go back and say, which episode was that? And then go back to the video itself. So yeah. I think that that's a great tool for us to have. Yeah, Thank you. absolutely. Yeah. So hopefully uh, you can you can take advantage of that. Well, as always, we are proud to be sponsored by the world's greatest digital music platform. And that, of course, is J Radio. J Radio. While you're working hard to keep your body in shape physically, the music you listen to while you run can help keep you in shape spiritually. We've partnered with J Radio to put together a group of running playlists by Dean, Lane, Holly, myself, and others that you hear here on the Run For God podcast. Plus, you can listen to a playlist put together by members of Run Club just like you. Check out the whole station of Run For God playlist at jradio.com and in the J Radio app. We're back with Angie Hawkins. And uh, listen, if you have questions about anything that, that I can help you with, you can email me at dean at runforgod.com. Um, and I'll answer simple questions. The hard ones I refer to, uh, I'll refer those to Angie. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I'm, no, I'm in the know. No, seriously, if there's anything that I can help with, um, then, then don't hesitate to, to holler. Um, hey, if you don't know about Run for God, maybe you've just happened up on this podcast and you didn't even know there was such a thing as the Run for God Run Club, then go to runforgodrunclub.com and check us out um, and, and get more involved in what we're doing. Maybe you want to join the Couch to Marathon program. I mean, that's a... That's that's going to be an epic thing. I, 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 yeah, it's, so, it's amazing the the amount of um, already the commitment and you know people think that they're struggling and then they talk they're already seeing but I can that you know within yeah. three weeks it's yeah. it's been awesome. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, that, listen, do you have a story? Wait, let me put that another way. You have a story. Everybody has a story. And you can go to either runforgod.com or runforgodrunclub.com and submit that story just as Angie did. Yes. Angie submitted her story that way. And then we saw it was Angie and we're like, whoa, hold on a second. Maybe we can get her to come up here and do this whole thing live. And so that's where we are. Now, maybe you're out there and you don't live too far away and you would love to come and do yours live. Well, you know what? Maybe we can do that for you, too. Um, but, but I'll meet you here. You do have to submit, submit. your story mm-hmm. first. We have to have your story before we can use your story. Something so. I didn't realize, you know, yes, we all have a story, but, I, you know, you never really realize, oh, but somebody might be walking in the same struggles that I was. Mm-hmm. And um, it was just a few weeks ago. Uh, Mitchell often has 
commented on his father and his story, how he was going to share it um, before he actually shared it. But he had mentioned the surgery, and that's what finally got me to. I'm like, it's it's time to share a portion of my story. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's true for everybody. Everybody thinks, so many people think, well, I'm just an ordinary person living an ordinary life, and I don't really have a story. But gosh, we've all had struggles. Mm -hmm. We've all had those Mm -hmm. things we've overcome. And so everybody has a story that can impact somebody else. Sure. And so, um, yeah, so that's that's where we are. So before we get to the story, um, the Couch to Marathon program. How is everybody out there doing with their Couch to Marathon program? Hope it's going well. How's your journey going so far? We yeah. have been in a holding stage right. um, and, and just doing, and I say a long run, but like six miles. And going into February, we've decided that we will do two seven miles. You know, And then yeah. we're, we're sticking there since we did our, our half marathon last year was our first. Um, I'm really looking forward to um, bending your ear and figuring out how I can do better Mm -hmm. going past the 10K. Um, But ultimately, just giving my body a little bit of time to to rest, which we'll talk a little bit about my injuries and whatnot a little bit more. Um, I have learned that I've I've got to take those rest days. And so we've we've been enjoying it. So I love it. You know, and and learning and diving in a little bit more of of learning about the wall and, you know, fueling and things like that. So. So you're in that middle group. You're in the group yeah. of I, I've been running and I'm in I'm in reasonable reasonably good shape mm-hmm. and I'm just going to kind of hang out where I am and then pick up when the program catches me. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, we've got a number of folks that are that are in there. I've seen a, a lot of those folks. We but we have a ton that are starting from scratch. Scratch. One of the things that I've learned over the years um, is that I feel for me. I grow so much more by helping somebody else. Yeah. And so this has been a blessing for me to just sit here and and really just, you know, pray for those that are out there that are starting right off, that are being so transparent. I think it's really important to stay plugged into that Facebook page. Yeah. And um, because that'll help everybody with their motivation mm-hmm. um, and accountability. But yeah. ultimately, you know, I also think find somebody else that you can help motivate, even in your early stages. And um Anyway, that's just yeah. my two cents. No, absolutely. You're 100% dead on. Yeah. And so, may I present to you Angie Hawkins' story, which she has titled, A Changed Woman, The Journey. All right. So, uh, running entered into my life in my mid-40s. I've lived a very active lifestyle, but I have asthma, and I've used that as my excuse not to run. I have been moving weights around the gym for many, many years. Resistance training is my jam. (laughs) We like the gym. It has always been challenging. However, it's a challenge that I've incurred for almost 30 years. With that active lifestyle came an eating disorder, self-image issues, body dysmorphia, to be quite honest, um, insecurity, shame, and guilt, along with many injuries throughout my body, my ankle, knee, hips, broken my tailbone, and currently I have a her- I have herniated discs in my cervical spine. Running? No way. As we all know, though, but God. <laughs> For as long as I can remember, I've been everyone's biggest cheerleader. I love to encourage others to motivate them to do those hard things that they just don't think they can do. And I love helping people find their place in an unhealthy world by guiding them to a healthier lifestyle. Maybe by while helping them I can help me too. I wasn't raised knowing Jesus Christ, God, nor his word. We never really talked about religion. We celebrated Easter and Christmas, but not for their true meanings, nor for what they represented. After my biological father left, my mother remarried a really good Southern man, and we moved from Maryland to Lilburn, Georgia, where I was raised. He truly saved our lives, but we'll get to that later. My step-grandmother was a Southern Baptist woman, and I guess that's, I guess she started planting the seeds as far back as 1980 to what it looks like to be loved by Christ. Fast forward from the 80s. After many years, I realized that although I was breathing, smiling, and going through the motions, I was far from alive. I didn't like the person I had become. I wanted so much more, but I didn't know what. I was in my late 30s living in Sarasota, Florida, and would often walk what's named the Ringling Bridge over Sarasota Bay. It is so beautiful and the air is so magical, but I would always get passed by older men and women who were running. 
they were running the bridge. This older population of runners was incredibly inspiring, so I too started to run. Mailbox to mailbox, street light to street light, one step at a time. It was a love-hate relationship, but I know that running was growing me into something new. It wasn't until later that I realized just how profoundly it would impact me and those around me spiritually. One morning I woke up and I said, enough's enough. I was, I was suffocating and I needed to break free from the bondages that were slowly killing me. At this time, I moved in with a beautiful soul. For the first time ever, I was living under the same roof with someone whose life reflected her love for Jesus. She was a runner to boot. She lived a very healthy lifestyle. She is so kind and so supportive, and it was exactly what I needed. She opened my eyes to the possibility that God could love me too. I know that Jackie is a gift from God. It wasn't until I received a private message on Facebook that I was eventually met with the greeting, yes, short, it's me, that I realized I was finally on the right road, that I would live, and that that really is a God who loves me. You see, it had been almost 30 years since my senior year in high school, and almost 30 years since I had been called short. Rusty's family calls me short, and although And through private messaging, I was talking to my first love. We dated for four years through high school. We grew up together. He was the perfect person for me to help me through this difficult growing season. He was once my best friend. Who knew me better than him? During those almost 30 years, Rusty traveled a very bumpy road. But that's his story. I'll let him tell that. He eventually gave his life to the Lord and now is gently leading me to do the same. Let me add something here. There is nothing gentle about this man. But it was and still is so beautiful how he just allows God to work through him. Fast forward one more time to to 2013. I was falling in love with running as I was falling in love with Rusty again. I did a few 5Ks, a yearly 10K, and was training harder than I ever had before. I was the healthiest I'd ever been, mind, body, and soul. I was growing in the Lord, learning His Word, and for the first time ever, living. Rusty, who now goes by the name of Patrick, it's his given name, um, but I still call him Rusty though. Rusty and I married in September 2015, only only after giving my life to Christ the month before. I knew that the Lord forgave me for all of my sins, and He is the one who was leading all of those many roads back together and to eventually donating one of my kidneys to my stepdad. March 10th, 2016, I woke up from from surgery a changed woman. Although I had publicly accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior months prior, I woke up truly trusting in my Heavenly Father that day in March, never looking back. Leading up to surgery, I had to take many blood tests, psych tests, every test leading to the next round of tests. During the six months of testing, Rusty and I fasted, we prayed, we worked out, we ran, cleaned up our diet, and drew even closer to the Lord and pressed on. We started to live our lives knowing that our bodies are gifts, and we now care for our temples as an act of worship and love for our Savior. The Apostle Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 10, 31, whatever you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Remember I had said that Ed, my stepdad, saved our lives back in the 80s by marrying my mom? Well, I see now that it was all part of God's plan to bring, to bring me to live my life for God's glory according to his will. Still a little unsure, I put my trust in the Lord that morning when I went into surgery. I woke up born again. I put my hope in what was unseen. I woke up and I could see. Although I'd publicly given my life to Christ months before, I woke up that morning in March 2016 and privately surrendered my life fully and completely. I finally know that I am a loved daughter and it's a love that no dad could ever give. I know that I have purpose. In Jeremiah 1, 5, we're told that before I, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I have not been abandoned, and I have purpose. I have since been guiding, coaching, and leading others to Christ through fitness, running, and well, basically wellness, a wellness platform. 
I want to share the hope of the Lord by sharing this story of how he has been transforming me from the inside out. I want to help others to feel better and to feel free, but ultimately to feel better, you have to get better. The only way to truly be free is through the gospel, through the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Wow, that's a, that's a powerful story. And, and like we said, everybody's got a story. And um, isn't it funny? You know, Mitchell all the time talks about streetlights. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and it was so clear to me to listen to the story as you pointed out those streetlights yeah. one after another that just the streetlight came on and it led you through that section of your life. And then another streetlight came on to get you to the next streetlight. This is a... Um an edited version of what, because I had written this before I even became uh, a Run for God member, club member, um, just because I needed to get it out, you yeah. know, just to, to to know that the Lord, I woke up that morning from surgery and I was like, oh my gosh, I really can. I can trust you. Yeah. So coming into difficult periods, any run I go to, Father, please, I trust you. Yeah. I trust you. So yeah. it was, it was, I, I think of the street lights all the time too. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And how the different, the people that came into your life mm-hmm. and then the, the choice that you make at a particular time that completely impacts Absolutely. your life so much. My friend Jackie will have, she has no idea of that. Um, she made, I think she probably has a little bit of an idea how the, the impact she made on my life, but I don't know that she knows the depth. But I'm watching sure. and living with somebody who loves Jesus makes a difference. It will make a, mm-hmm. a ton of difference, mm-hmm. yeah. She's beautiful. My wife always keeps me straight. You know, when I start to go off the rails and I get in the right. direction I shouldn't go, she she warns me pretty early. Yeah. She, she and you know she gently nudges me back into uh, those gentle into the nudges. Right yeah. yeah. She's yeah. pretty good at being gentle about it most of the time. Now she can be pretty for a little short lady. She, she can be pretty tough. Is she short? Yes. Yeah. She's, <laughs> she's, she's tiny. Five, she's five one. Oh wow! Yeah. She's tiny. Yeah. She's a she's a little lady. Um, but okay, but, so I don't feel so short then. But yeah. she can be pretty fiery. Yeah, uh, if yeah. she wants to be so. That's you don't awesome. want to be on her bad side. I'm just saying. Why would you want uh, to be? I mean, I, you well, know. I, I try. I, yeah. I, Come on, Dean. I'm just not. I'm not bright though. <laughs> and that, that that presents issues sometimes. <laughs> well, we all. Have so that. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you have some scripture passages here. The first one says, "Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart." Mm-hmm. Isn't that isn't that kind of hard to understand? Mm-hmm. How God can know us before we're born? I, I still, or even our path, you know, in in with mine and, and Patrick's um, life, you know, the, in the beginning when I first gave my life to Christ, uh, you know, I kind of always said, oh, I, we really messed things up as kids. But now we were just talking about this just, it was either the last night or the night before because this was, you know, all so new again. And I was like, I don't think we really did. I, I think that he needed to go down his path because God has is working him, th- working through him in ways that there's no. And because he had to go down that path, I would have killed him through the things that he yeah. had had was in. And then I'd be, I don't know, maybe I'd be doing prison ministry or something. But, <laughs> <laughs> but no, it, it's amazing to me that that God you know, knows us every hair in our head. Yeah. God's timing. Mm. Yeah. He brought me to a point uh, and I've shared the story before about leaving a job that I had been in for 25 Mm -hmm. years, pretty much since college. And he he brought me to a place that I absolutely love, but never would have taken the chance to be there had I not gone through some stuff that got me to the point where I'm, you know, and, uh, but I wouldn't have been ready any earlier either. Yeah. And so yeah, looking it's, back, it's, hindsight, um, looking back over my life, like I said, I didn't give my life to Christ until, you know, just recently. Um, but I can see I've always been attached to something and, yeah. and I, my morals or what have you that I always say, oh, and I always chalked it up to my mom. Well, I can't disappoint my mom, you yeah. know, and she's worked hard you know, for a while. She was a single mom and, and has worked three jobs and, and has done. I mean, she that's what she does. She works. But and I didn't want to disappoint her. But I realize now it's it's you know the Lord just the, leading me and yeah. and guiding me and, and has those bumper rails. Okay, that's too far. Let's get back on track. <laughs> well, and you mentioned up front there at the beginning of the story something about mm. not being confident. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not sure. I can't remember the exact words that you used there, but um, that's hard to believe. But body dysmorphia. But possibly but, is that no no no. Oh, I, oh okay. Yeah, you were talking about just having oh, um, just the insecurities. In the general. insecurities. I mm-hmm. think it was one of the words that you used. And mm-hmm. on the outside, mm-hmm. looking at your personality, it's like oh, it's so hard to see. 
But you know, that's true with a lot of people. There's a, there are a lot of people yeah. out there that we just assume, mm-hmm. hey, that, guy, that guy's got his life together. Yeah. And on the inside, they're a total mess. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, and I, I, I jokingly say that I'm a hot mess, but you know, for many years, it was only the people who intimately knew me, mm-hmm. knew my struggles of my insecurities. And, um, but as I've not only grown older, but now grown in, in Christ, like, and in, in walking in his light, um, I realize that I can help others too, yeah. you know, just to say, look, we're, we all have it mm-hmm. um, to some degree or what have you. How can I help if you, yeah. if you need, you know? Yeah. So. Absolutely. Scripture passage number two. Uh, and I can't help but think about mm. the movie, Remember the Goal, <laughs> when, I, when I hear this, this uh, verse, because it was so prevalent in that movie. Whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, uh, everything, 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 he says, everything we do, including running. Including running. Yeah, um, I, I have a group of people that I try to encourage to, you know, to seek the Lord first with their workouts or, you know, with, again, that word diet and whatnot. Um, what does it, because what you eat is going to be different than what I eat. The way you run is going to be different, you know, than, than my run, my training plan. Mm-hmm. And so seek the Lord because, you know, it, and, and then give it back to him because mm-hmm. we, we are glorifying him through all that we do, even running. That's right. And um, so we have to seek him first. And it doesn't mean we his have purpose. to be preaching all the right, time. I right. think sometimes we look at that and we think, well, and then there are those people out there who they're preaching all the time. All the time. Mm-hmm. And that doesn't work well for sure. people who, who aren't Christians. Sure, right? sure. Um, so I think everybody as a as a new Christian, as a baby Christian, that everybody wants to they're on fire. Yeah, you and you're it's excited. like Whoa, settle you know, just pull it back. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I've been that girl. But it does it does mean that the things that we do should be things that make God proud sure. of what we're doing. Sure. Uh, when we when we do our job, mm-hmm. we should do it in such a way that God looks at it and says, That's that's the way I would do it. You know, right. or or you know, that's right. that's Well even scripture tells us that we are to, you know, act as we we are working for the Lord, the Lord. We are servant to him, That's not right. necessarily our boss. Yeah, yeah. But and today so many people are doing things to please themselves mm-hmm. because I mean that's what how many t- two words that I, I just can't I can't hardly hear without having a negative thought in my brain is I deserve. Absolutely. I I just I despise that phrase because I what we deserve is hell. That's what, right. That's what we deserve. That's what we And the Bible right. tells us right. that, and it's right. really clear about that. And uh, and so when somebody says, I deserve, I'm like, eh. mm-hmm. Now, I realize most people use it in a, in a way that's, right. that they don't mean it. I've worked hard for this. I deserve it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But, uh, yeah, but we gotta we have to be careful with that and understand yeah. that just trying to go out there and please ourselves is leads to destruction. That's what the Bible tells us. Right? Sure, sure. Well, yeah. entitlement. Is, is along that same line. Mm, yeah, is. do you agree? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so Give scripture it passage number three. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Of course, that's Philippians 3.14. Um We've talked about it in the past. We're not there, right, and we won't right, get there right. while we're on this earth. That, um, but it's it's a constant thing where we're trying to get better all the time. All the right? time, yeah. yeah. Um, and I think this is probably what you're going to be talking about here shortly with contentment. You know, um, we are taught not to be lukewarm. So anything that I do, I try my hardest to, you know. But I haven't learned it all. Just like we, I don't know the Bible totally, but I'm I, I learn every day. I try to I, you know I do no more trying. I do I dive in. Um, but I often you know I always have my hashtags after my posts, and oftentimes I'll say hashtag under construction, yeah. mind, body, and spirit. I yeah. mean we we have to constantly keep because I haven't learned it all. But I'm not going to forget what's happened in my past. Right. But just to keep pressing forward because God's called us to you know help build His kingdom and and share the word and share stories yeah yeah yeah, yeah this this thing that we, that we call life is more of an ultra marathon isn't it mm, it's yeah it's, it's like a long race that really never ends sure and, and so i think sometimes we now are there times to take a break yes there are even ultra marathoners you go I, i've got a i've got a coach 
that was my coach in high school, who still to this day is over 70 years old and still runs a 314-mile unsupported race. Wow. Um, it starts just across the river in Missouri and finishes in northeast Georgia. How long? It's 314 miles. But how, like how many... How, how many months? It, how long has it taken to do? <laughs> yes. Um, it takes them about six days wow. to do it. Wow. Um, That's you know, awesome. the winner will do it in three plus days. Unbelievable. Uh, but uh, okay. but the bottom bottom line is is um, it they have to stop. I asked him one day. I said, "Well, what do you do at night? You know, you're out there for six days. You obviously have to sleep. Sure. Where do you sleep? Sure. And um, what he'll do is he just lays down the side of the road, goes to sleep, and just it, and takes a nap whatever um every once in a while there maybe one time during that trip he'll stop at a hotel that's along the side of the road there and, and stop and stay there but but the bottom line is is there's time for rest in an ultra mm-hmm. marathon mm-hmm. there's time for rest in our journey um but we're never to go well i'm packing it in the race is over we never know it? everything that's right one of the things i love about uh, actually attending church you know last year with everybody you know being removed from church yeah. but i love to look across the, you know the congregation and see possibly an older person sitting and learning their bible read yeah. you know and you know them and you know they they they've but they still want to keep learning yeah i did ruth four times in a year a couple years ago yeah. and each time i'm like really we're doing this one I, my last bible study group we did it yeah you learn something new every or look time. at it at a different angle yeah. every, every yeah. time every time and yeah that's that's true for everybody out there listening it doesn't matter what your age is mm-hmm. it doesn't matter who you are mm-hmm. god can use you in some way uh you know he he he's using he uses me through this whole running thing which is weird right i mean think about that what uh, what can there be out there that's any more off of a spiritual path than than just running. I, I mean, had a conversation an with a girl on the Facebook page last night about that, how she never thought, and using the Run for God tagline, she never thought she would um, meet meet God in a runner space. Yeah. And and I was like, hey, yeah. you got that. <laughs> yeah, th- yeah. yeah, I do. I mean, not only, please, Lord, get me up this hill, but <laughs> I've learned to just really, you know, just unplug and listen to him. Even if I'm listening, I always listen to a sermon or something while I'm running. Yeah. Um, if not the, you know, I think too yeah. much. I, my, my mind is constantly going. <laughs> so, but yeah, that's, that's cool. Hard, hard to slow it down. It's hard to slow it down. Question one, until we completely recognize that we're being mm-hmm. held captive, we never truly recognize that we need a savior. I didn't know that I was being held captive by the bonds of the negative thoughts that I had of myself and feeling as if I had no purpose. When was it that you realized that all of the many roads that you've traveled are leading to God's purpose for your life? It's a great question. Um, I had no idea that I was, I truly was suffering. Yeah. Yeah, I thought, oh, I've got it under control. Uh Like we talked about, I always had the smile on Mm -hmm. and, and it wasn't until one day, and I, I remember I was eating breakfast out, um, I lived in Florida at the time, and I was outside on the beach, and I was like, I can't do this anymore. Mm. I can't play this game anymore. Yeah. But I think that that's when God was like, all right, let's pull it all together. You're yeah. gonna, because it was, you know, things I cut out. Um, I, I found out I have a, a half brother, um, and he, took me one step closer to the Lord and things you, you just never know. Yeah. But the, those ties that were holding me back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's all the time. It's, it's in our circumstances mm-hmm. and the things that we do um, and, and where we find ourselves. Um, and, it, and sometimes it's a really clear voice yeah. that kind of gives us a direction. But then a lot of times it's like the old joke, you know, you've probably heard the joke where the, the guy and the, the floodwaters are rising on his house and, you know, the, he's 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 in our house. A guy comes up in a big pick, four-wheel drive pickup truck and says, uh, hey, come with me. And he's like, no, 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 God's going to save me. And then the, the water's <laughs> raised to the second floor and a guy comes by in a boat. He says, well, come on, jump in my boat, come with me. Oh, no, 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 God's going to save me. And then the water's raised even higher. He gets up on the roof of his house and a helicopter comes by and says, hey, he throws a rope down and says, come on up here. He says, no, 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 God's going to save me. Well, he dies, and he goes to heaven. And he says, God, I don't understand. You know, I just I put all my trust in you, and you didn't save me. He said, well, I sent you a pickup truck, a boat, and a helicopter. What more did you want? <laughs> don't you know, block your blessings. <laughs> yeah. I mean, some, sometimes um, 
we've got these things right in our face yeah. that are clearly God provided that we ignore. Yeah. And I think that that's a that can be a problem for all of us at times. Right. Sometimes we don't hear or don't see it. Yeah. And that was my eyes wide open. You know, yeah. I woke up. I was like, "Wow, look yeah. at all the things that I should have done differently." But or we just don't have that much of a connection and 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 yeah. or you want to say, I can do better. Yeah. You know. Yeah. That's, that's so many different angles, yeah. yeah. But we have a responsibility for acting on those opportunities mm-hmm. that God provides us. It takes um, action. Yep. Yeah. Question two. All that we have is given to us by our Heavenly Father. That includes our bodies. How we fuel them and treat them should reflect our appreciation of the gift we've been given. Not because of something we do, but because of what God has already given. Do you ever consider what you eat and drink as a reflection of your gratitude to your Heavenly Father for His Uh, gift he's given or when you run or work out do you ever consider the ability to achieve success and accomplishment is actually given to you through grace from your heavenly father oh my god shame on us if we never do well and and i and oftentimes you know patrick will say that's a lot angie why why do you and i don't mean that as a shame thing not not do you ever think about that you know but but ultimately again i was unknowingly healthy to give my kidney to my stepdad. He spent many years on dialysis and sick and, and everything. And um, again, it was a, definitely a God thing where I said, I'll get tested. Yeah, and I was like, what did I just say? You know, <laughs> But never once did I look back because it just kept leading to more tests. And, yeah. and that's, I was, again, it's just a, a God way of his timing and, and revealing himself to me in a way that I could actually see that he was right there with me. But if I hadn't been healthy, then I possibly couldn't have been able to donate my kidney. Yeah, that's right. And and you you, it, I think so. Our house, we think about that sort of thing all the time. We never know when our health. Oftentimes, we think if I get high blood pressure, there's medicine for it. I have time to now go back and fix if that's the case. Yeah. Well, let's go ahead and pre, and, yeah, and just yeah. That's that, that's just my thought. Yeah. No, I, I totally agree. Um, and some people look at they're running for example Mm -hmm. and they think well i'm not very good at it right so why should i thank god for it i'm like but you're moving you can do it yeah you can do it and it's and it's helping you and it's making you healthier and it's creating a better mind it's doing all all these things for you and be be thankful for it yeah Um, i can't tell you there have been several times I, i i live out in the country and I run out my door and I'm basically on these rural roads where there's nothing around and very little traffic. And sometimes I'll go on an early morning run and I'll be out six miles from the house and it'll just be so quiet and it'll be so beautiful mm-hmm. and I'll stop. Mm-hmm. And I don't stop in the middle of runs. I just don't do that. Mm-hmm. But every once in a while, I just have to stop and just go, God, this is so awesome mm-hmm. that I can do this mm-hmm. and that I'm out here and it, it's it's just overwhelming on uh, right. at times. It's such a gift. Sometimes um, we've uh, I've talked a few times through Facebook uh, about how, you know my cold, my circulation, and things like that. Um, well, unfortunately, but fortunately, you know, we like to eat in our house. So my husband works, and he works hard, and <laughs> he works late into the you know late into the night. This time of year, we do a lot of late runs um, or later in the evening or what have you. Um, and instead of dwelling in that cold, I've really learned to open my eyes and see the sunset yeah. or see those beautiful gifts that God gives mm-hmm. us and, and to, to, to stop thinking about it's cold, it's yeah. dark, I can't see, what if I trip, what, you know, and uh, wasting that energy, you know? Yeah, yeah. and being, being glad, I've always liked yeah. the idea of getting done with it and being like, I just did that. Right, I just, right. I I just did, did that. that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, that's one of Patrick's saying is crave the finish, and not for the reason that most people think, but it's, you know, crave the finish, you know, and then look back, that adrenaline rush. Yeah, absolutely. You know, is, is just beautiful. It's like, I just did that. Yep, yep. Mm-hmm. And, and if it's not running, there's something else that God gave you. Yeah. Everybody out there has, has has some yeah. talent and I know there's ever there's always people out there go oh, I don't have any talents yes you do you do well I've learned even my talking is talent yes it is <laughs> it, it absolutely is there's yeah. no question about yeah. it and so we should thank God for those things God gave me running yeah to 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 be good at he I tell people that he gave most people something useful to be good at he gave me running I and I think that's useful. <laughs> I do. I've I've benefited from from following you. I well, have to say this, you know, because I'm always you know, 
But because you're so fast, I know I'm not going to be fast like that, or at least I don't think that's part of his plan. I mean, I've got short legs, everything. Um, But it encourages me to keep going. You know, yeah. to just the, and then when you said that that time that you fell to the, the ground and you were in the ditch and your neighbor had to come get you, I appreciate even those stories because it's like sometimes I get into my head thinking I'm the only one that struggled at that run, mm-hmm. and then Dean throws a, a story about how he was in the ditch and his neighbor had to come get yeah. him. Well, at least my neighbor didn't have to. It's <laughs> <laughs> true. Story. So thank you, thank you for being so oh, transparent. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a great story and reflections, Angie. So Thank much you. appreciate you sharing it. Thank um, you. That's a very personal story, and um, I know it's an emotional thing to share. I'm, I'm, I am I am pretty it. shocked that that I didn't cry because there are a couple times. I mean, and, and like I have said and said earlier, it's my story. I don't know why I get so tied up on it, but it's just the sharing. Did very well. Thank you. As a mom, I want to make sure we choose a cereal that's not entirely derived from sugar. Their car seats have to be nationally CPS certified, and their first car has to have every possible safety feature known to man. I just want to do my best to make sure that they're safe. One thing I don't have to worry about is the content they hear on J Radio. Not only do they love the music, but I know it's only going to be a positive message that I would approve of. Now, if I could just figure out how to get my youngest from sticking everything up his nose. Sign up at JRadio.com and download the new J Radio app in your app store. All right, so we're back, and I have been informed that um, I shouldn't talk about myself being old. Uh, I just put Angie on the spot here. Uh, <laughs> but, um, but you know, it, it's uh, it's mostly a joke. I know. I, you know, one of the things I appreciate, Angie, is is I so appreciate that that comment that, because I know I'm, I, I do, I go overboard with it sometimes. I think we but, all do. Mm-hmm. But I think that um, I, most of the time the truth is, is I'm really thankful. Yeah. That God, I think about it all the time. I, you know, I ran that 5K recently, It was a, and I ran a really good race, so well and I'm chasing him. down a college kid. Yeah. And I mean, I'm just about catching him, and I'm thinking, Lord, I'm the old how guy. you have blessed yeah. me so, yeah. so much, you know, and so... It, it's it's all a joke. I, and, and you know, it, we talking about that. I'm just I needed to, to tell you, you know, you're not old. And and because you have five extra years on me doesn't mean anything. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I remember somebody telling me one day, well, you know, if if so and so is ahead of you, I'll trip him. I'm like, no, no, I no, I wouldn't beat, beat him. him on my own. I don't. Mm-hmm. Well, he, you know, he's half your age. I don't care. Even better, <laughs> right? Right. Uh, All right, so listen, if you're out there and you're wondering, Angie has got this beautiful shirt on right now. I mean, and if you want a Run For God shirt, then you can find that in the store. So um, so go to runforgod.com and go to the store, runforgodrunclub.com. Go to the store and check that out. Because I'm sure that when you wear that shirt out in public, people ask you about it, don't All they? the time, yeah. all the time. Yeah. Actually, one of the girls that um, has joined the Couch to Marathon, we are friends on Facebook through a group that we met, and she actually commented on the shirt, and that's what brought her to the Couch to Marathon. See? That, mm-hmm. I, because the, of the shirt. The shirt is a, is a great witness. It's a great way to get started with yeah. being able to share your testimony. Right. And those little cards also that mm-hmm. that we can get through the store um, uh, to to that's nice to have when you're running or what have you instead yeah. of do you have a pen I can send you the the email yeah. address or you know yeah absolutely I can't absolutely. think of what those little cards are called though ambassador cards yes yeah <laughs> <laughs> those words all right so it's time for Dean's thoughts and that's a time when I share something that I've written about the intersection between running and faith and this week it is about contentment. And I think comfort is overrated. Mm. So let me tell you why I think it's overrated. The the story is entitled, Are We Too Content? Everything is getting easier. When I flash back to my childhood and then look to where we are today, it is truly mind-boggling. From the cell phone, which has completely changed many facets of our lives, to Amazon, where two minutes of shopping and a click will bring a (laughs) shiny new thing to your door in two days. As amazing as it is, I submit to you that there are drawbacks to these things. Let me explain. How did we get here? Why do we have Amazon, for example? After all, I remember the days of Sears and Roebuck and Land's End catalogs. We've been able to buy things from home for a long time. What changed? 
the ease and efficiency of ordering from home and having that order delivered to your doorstep. The competitive nature of Amazon that leads to the lowest possible price. The staggering number of choices among almost any product. I could go on and on, but you get the picture. But Dean, you said there were drawbacks. Those are all undeniably great things. Well, are they? Is making our lives easier a great thing, or are there inherent problems with it? Although there are great positives to cell phones and one-click ordering, here's my question. Has it made our lives too convenient, too easy? I think it's a reasonable question. Again, let me explain what I mean. Running is hard. It requires work. Whether it's waking up before the sun to get it done or simply the act itself, there is friction in running. The conflict comes when we realize that we're, we're getting used to everything becoming easier. Even things that have seemingly be, been around forever are getting easier. We take a key fob that unlocks our door for granted these days. I rode in cars when I was a kid that had no air conditioning. Yeah. And I don't mean that it was broke either. <laughs> the car didn't come with it. Trying to be a runner today is especially difficult because there is really no way to make it easier except through brute force. And we don't brute force anything these days, do we? Mm -hmm. And because everything else gets easier, it feels against the grain to do something that is inherently tough to do. I think that's why many people look at runners and they think, why would they do that? We hear them, don't we? They would argue that we should get a fitness mirror because although that can still be tough exercise, it's easier with a device that helps us along. Admittedly, there are some similar things that have touched the running community, but I, for one, am not buying into them. I'm certainly not saying that using Zwift is a bad thing, but it's not for me. Why? I like the difficulty of running because it's difficult. I don't want it to be easier because I think there is value in doing something as physically demanding as running. In addition, maybe the best part of running is its rawness. Other than shoes and apparel, running hasn't really changed. We may do it for a different reason today, but it's still the same raw activity. And here is my main point. What happens when we take all the resistance out of our lives? What happens when Everything is done virtually with the press of some buttons. We're always looking for contentment. And the world would tell us that making things easier leads to contentment. Well, it doesn't make me content. As a matter of fact, it disturbs me a bit. And I want no part of being overly content. Give me an uncomfortable, rain-soaked, leg-burning, lung-searing, push-it-to-the-limit run, and I'll find contentment there. Besides, James has impressed upon us for 2,000 years that life is not supposed to be easy when he says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the, the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Amen. Contentment, James didn't see the value in it. Jesus didn't see the value in it either when he was praying in the garden before being led away to be executed. Pray when it's hard. Speak Jesus' name boldly, even if people think you're kooky, and maybe especially when people think you're kooky. Keep running. Stay uncomfortable. It's all biblical. It's true. It's a good story. So, Angie, you strike mm -hmm. me as being somebody who is kind of right along those same lines. Yes. Yes. Um, I, we definitely speak Jesus' name quite often in my house. Um, but, you know, being... We like, I like the hard, the, the, the reason I like running, you, you guys asked this last year, you know, do you love running? Do you not love running? And yeah. I, I thought a lot about it and I said, like, I don't love running, but I do. I love the challenge. Going back to, I've been moving weights around the gym for my whole life, just about. Mm -hmm. And um, by no means is that easy, but I've gotten used to that. I'm content in the gym. That's my comfort zone. Yeah. And running takes me out of my comfort zone, and it, it is, um, like you said, it, it it's enhanced my thinking. It's it's you know brought new life to, and it's hard. And that's where growth happens, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah it's hard, yeah. and I don't want it to be easy. I mean, sure, I want the easy run sometimes, be, you know, just. But ultimately, no matter what, you guys always say, everybody always says, when you get back, who has ever said, I wish I didn't do that? Yeah. 
You're absolutely right. Mm-hmm. I don't want to be and, consent on the couch. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, don't get me wrong. I love, I, yeah. I love comfort. Yeah. I mean, you know, we we I have things purposefully that I buy for con- comfort's sake. I have a very comfortable truck that I just drove up here. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I think there is, there's value in purposefully making yourself uncomfortable. Sure. In, in purposefully going yeah. outside of your comfort zone, as we call it. Um, I agree. You know, we, we, we look at our running muscles, and we've talked about how how – our muscles get stronger and how we become better runners is by breaking them down mm-hmm. and then rebuilding them mm-hmm. and breaking them down is being uncomfortable sure right? yeah so yeah and it's during that that uncomfortableness is when we grow yeah. well that's actually in the rest so that gets twisted it's never mind and how many stories have we heard of people who find jesus and they find mm-hmm. jesus outside their comfort zone because mm-hmm. they went outside their comfort sure. zone or because somebody dragged them outside of their comfort the zone. last mile of our um, half marathon in october i was crying yeah. And and just like uh, literally dropping the weight of all that has been hindering me. Yeah. And and yeah, he is right yeah. there. So I, I always say, go to that, that, that line where you think you can't go anymore and Jesus is gonna meet you right there. Yep. Go a little and go a little, go bit, a little further bit further because he'll mm-hmm. go with you. Because he'll go with you. That's yeah. right. Trust. Yeah. Trust in him. Absolutely. So here's a challenge to everybody out there. I wanna throw out this challenge. I want you to try to do one uncomfortable thing every day. Something, something uncomfortable, something that gets you outside of your comfort that you know is good, yeah, right? Yeah. That uncomfortable thing, it may, maybe you know, maybe you don't read your Bible, and maybe that is something that you realize that I could do more of that, and mm-hmm. it would, and and it's uncomfortable to force yourself to do that. Uh, it could be anything. Um, it could be giving up a food that you know is not good for you. Mm-hmm. Um, whatever it is, do an uncomfortable thing every day. And I promise you in the long run, what you'll find out is when you when you see those uncomfortable things, you'll look at them a whole different way. Right, 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 right. But we're, we're so busy this this day and time looking for the comfortable. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We're, we're, the, we're the folks who... I, and I say this, and, and I know this sounds self-serving, and I sound like I'm bragging on myself, and I don't mean it in that way. But if I walk into a room, and there's a padded chair and a metal chair, I'm going to sit in the metal chair. And I, I, again, it's a it's a mindset and mm-hmm. a way that I think about things. That my my thought is, I'd rather leave that cushion chair for somebody else because sure. I don't need it. Yeah. You know, yeah. And I'm kind of proud of that. I don't need that. I don't that. need that. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, and I've, I've told, um, I, I like to train um, the older population. And so I have, you know, some older clients and whatnot that I'm a personal trainer for. And I actually told a lady to, she was talking about getting, and by no means am I telling you to get rid of your, your housekeeper or anything like that, somebody that's going to come clean your house once a month or whatever. But she was thinking about getting rid of it because she could. And mm-hmm. I said, but just remember when you stop pushing that vacuum around that that's one less thing that you're going to not be able to do anymore yeah. you know, again she's an older population and everything yeah. and so um she does have the lady come in and clean her tubs you know once a month or what have you but she gets her vacuum she, out she keeps it yeah mm-hmm. well, she, and, and good for her uh, functional fitness is so important and, and and just staying but the comforts of i can sit on the couch yeah mm-hmm. and let, i can park my car closer you can or you could park it back there and walk a little bit more and keep that heart moving that's right yep great point that's my mind If you've ever participated in any sport, you've probably met a great coach. Great coaches inspire us to do more than we ever thought possible. You can be the leader that helps others achieve things they never thought possible. You, yes, you have the ability and the opportunity to be that person. All you need is a heart to help people and the ability to follow a plan. The Run for God 5K Challenge will come ready to help you inspire those around you. The step-by-step guide will direct you how to plan, pray, and train people both physically and spiritually. You can help them become more fit in their health and in their walk with Christ. Share your passion. Go to runforgod.com to find out how to inspire others to accomplish big things. All right, so we're back. And Angie, I got a question for you. Yes, sir. Do you pay attention to track and field at all? Just what you teach us. Okay, because because most <laughs> actually people I was don't. at the gym the other day and I was watching it on, on at the gym. Okay, while yeah. I was on the treadmill. Yeah, because the average person doesn't really watch yeah. track and field that much. But I love track and field. Man, I could watch track and field all day long. I could watch video after video after video. I get caught up because I love 
body and and the, the I love watching the body move yeah. but to get caught up in you know times and stuff like that I'm like oh he was fast <laughs> <laughs> uh, there have been there have been a couple of meets lately okay. um, they've had some of these high school meets and they've had some some kids run crazy yeah. fast times I think that this whole couple of things have happened the whole pandemic thing has really focused people on training because it's right. like well I, I'm not, if I'm not going mm-hmm. to school I'm not doing these other things I'm unencumbered I get more rest and so people have trained harder, and we had a high school girl run a 202 for an 800 meters. Um, just to let you know, wow. I couldn't run half of a 202. Wow. It's, it's a crazy fast time. So, um, yeah, and there were several in that race that were wow. under like 205. Wow. Um, and, and high school girls. I mean, that's fast for, that could meet, that could win a, a conference meet in a college. It's fast enough. So That's so interesting. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so let me, do you, have, have you paid attention to the Olympics? Do you think there's going to be an Olympics? Um, yes and no. I I I hope because I'm I'm a, I like tradition, and and for something to you know, the pandemic has taken so much yeah. and stopped so much. Um, but I'm you know, but I also am very aware of the importance of of health and things like that. I think you know there there are ways. I, I, I don't. I'm, let me just say it's out of my realm of thinking. So. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have an answer for that one. Well, the polls in Japan say the people in Japan don't really want it there. They don't because they don't want more coming. people. Yeah, they want yeah. more people in their country yeah. making things worse. But I think there's still time to make decisions, and sure. we'll have to see how the, yeah. the how the virus does over the next couple of months. As we, the problem is, is of course, with the Olympics, it's so big. Right. You can't wait and just plan everything at last no. month. No, you know? well, that was a part of the problem with last year. A lot of the events had to cancel because they were so unsure. Yeah. Um, with with our local events and, and things like that, um, we talk about, or you guys have talked about the Peachtree Road Race. That was always my 10K. That's my 10K per year that we look forward to. It's our Fourth of July tradition. Well, they um, had to pull it this past year, and it was the first time in 55, 51 years. Yeah. And, and um, you know, I felt bad for them mm-hmm. also because they got such backlash. But ultimately, they couldn't get the permits. Yeah. So it, it comes down to it. Some things are out of even the hands of the the event directors and whatnot. Yeah, yeah and you mentioned Grace a, a little Grace bit ago. Owners, yeah. I mean, it, yeah, you know, you got to understand that people are put in a tough spot. Yeah, and if you go forward with it, people are going to be upset, and if you don't go forward with it, people sure. are going to be upset, and and you have to fall on one one side, one or, side the or the other. other. Mm-hmm. And whether or not you agree with it or not mm-hmm. doesn't really matter. The, yeah. the bottom line is, right, is they right, had to make right. a decision and understand that that decision was hard for them to make. And and I, I often will say, um, I, for most of my life, have made em- my decisions off of emotion. And I'm learning that, you know, I do have to, we have to stop and, and really take in consideration of everybody else yeah. um, in some degree. And yeah. um, when you're looking at large masses of people like that and everything. and you know. Well, in the Peachtree Road Race, I mean, think about how much Over, money uh, yeah, they make in yeah, that. I mean, yeah. for them to, to cancel it, that, that it has to be, sure. they have to feel certain they had that that's to. what they mm-hmm. need to do. And, and it, you know, there's, there, it's, it, there's over 60, there are 60,000 participants. Yeah. Plus, the amount of crowd and everything along the they had to i mean yeah. there's no way that they could have done that and then ask people well don't come and it, yeah. yeah i love running it because of the participant right. i mean because of the crowds and yeah. everything so yeah. yeah i'm not a big crowd person myself but i but running that's, but, just and they're on the sides yeah. yeah but you don't get the the energy and everything from the crowds no oh wow no, no. now i can't wait to run our yeah. first half, half with a crowd we did a self-supported half and yeah. our buddy chris came out with us yeah. and I think, in my mind, I think I would have done better if there were people around. <laughs> most most people like crowds. Yeah. Um, I, I don't. You know, I don't mind. A, you know, a few people. I I like small events. Yeah. I like small groups. Yeah. If I'm going to hang out with a group of people, I like oh, it to no. be five mm-hmm. or six people. I don't I'm like it. I don't one. like a group of. The, the 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 rides there's a local group here who rides a lot bikes mm-hmm. and uh, when I was training for triathlon riding mm-hmm. they, sometimes I, the group that I ride in would get up to like fifty people and I'm like I, I'm not comfortable. you were talking about that with, um, with yeah. Coach Andy about it and and I was yeah. and I was getting like the EBGBs thinking yeah. of all those people so close yeah, yeah. I'm not, yeah. not a big fan of it but anyway yeah. um, I'm really I know people look at me and they go no way I'm an introvert you've said that I, I love I, I like myself time. Just yeah. being, being alone. So maybe that's why I like running so much. <laughs> Probably. So can you name any of the USA Marathon runners? 
Do you know who any of them are? No. Yeah. No, but I, I recognize faces, though. But I don't know the names. But I bet you don't even recognize most of the faces. He probably, maybe one of them, you probably recognize Galen Rupp. Um, because he's been in the Olympics before. Okay. Um, but the rest of them, yeah. the, the names yeah. that have made it to the Olympics are people we don't know. But they've all got these really interesting stories. Isn't one of them local? Is she a, a female? Molly Seidel or Sally Kipiego or Alephine Tulimuk. Those are the three that are in it. I don't remember. Um, I just remember hearing a story about a, a local. But anyway, there may be, it may be, maybe it was like fifth place. It may, may be. <laughs> Well, here, here's some here's the interesting things about him. Okay, so Tulia Muck, who is the, okay. the woman who won the trials and is going to be the number one runner for the United States, she's pregnant right now. Oh wow! Right now, she hasn't given birth yet, and um, she's going to give birth just a few months before the Olympics starts. And she'll run. And she, her plan is to run. And you know, we'll see how that goes. But sure. I, I think that's an interesting story. That'll be to, a good one to follow. To follow mm-hmm. Molly Seidel, who was second in the, on the women's side, was running in her first marathon she'd ever run in that race and finish second. I have, yeah, I read something on her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and yeah. so that's that's really interesting. Yeah. Molly Seidel's been around for a little while, but that's her first marathon. That's awesome. And then Sally Kipiego, is, this is actually her second Olympics, but her first Olympics was with Kenya mm. in the 5K. So this is a whole different experience, a whole different country and everything for her. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. So that's on the women's side. And then on the men's side, you got uh, um, Galen Rupp, who won and you know he finished uh, he, he finished in, in on the podium in the last Olympics in the marathon. Um, so we we expected him to win. Mm-hmm. He did win, but he has had a series of injuries that he's recovering from. Was recovering from even had some problems at the time of the Olympic trials. Wow. Um, and he's got this congenital problem in his heel, um, and so he he's still trying to come back from a problem that and you know Rupp won a silver medal in the ten k on the track mm-hmm. in the Olympics as mm-hmm. well. So um, so he that he is an interesting story to see if he can come fully back. Jacob Riley is a guy who um, uh, went through that same surgery as Rupp, actually. And I remember seeing Jacob Riley when I run in this, this race every year. It moves around to different places across the country every year, and it's a big cross-country race. And uh, I run in the Masters race, which is all the over 40 guys. This guy was running in the, the, the fast guy race. Um, <laughs> And I remember watching him win that race there in Kentucky and watching him go up and down those hills so fast. It was crazy to watch him go. Uh, But anyway, ran sub 30 on a course that was just muddy and miserable. And there wasn't a flat spot on the course. I'm so encouraged by things like that, like like reading and hearing things about it. It's like, okay, well, then when I hit mud next time, I shouldn't really. Well, this one may encourage you even more. Abdi Abdi Rahman. This is his, I think this is his third marathon third third year as a marathoner Marathoner. for them for americans he's 44 years old 44 he's only one year younger than meb kofleski was and he's still you know meb kofleski of course is retired and and, and obviously did great things but uh, but abdi is still out there at 44 and competing with the young guys and still in it yeah yeah that's awesome Uh, so that's pretty cool all right so we have a trivia question for this week so it's here. Uh, don't don't blurt this one out, I okay? All right. I promise. All right. <laughs> there was a guy from the United States who won the 1972 Olympic marathon and basically set off the distance running boom that we enjoy today. What was his name? Do you know who that is? I don't. Yeah. Okay. No, this will be one I have to go research. Yeah. I love researching uh, every one of them. Um, it's like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You learn some interesting things. Absolutely. And I would encourage you, don't just go to this guy's Wikipedia page. Okay. Learn a little bit more. Go, dig a go little deeper. bit deeper and mm-hmm. you'll find some more interesting things about him outside of running. But, uh, yeah, check that out. Okay. Now, if you get the answer to that question, you'll have to email that to dean at Run for God. You have to be a Run Club member. And you have to email me at dean at runforgod.com. And if you are the first one, once this comes out, to answer that, then you will win a Run Club box. So, I love my Run Club box. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. love so, my shirt. Yeah. So, if you know the answer to that, or if you can find it quickly enough to get it there, um, answer that question. Got it. Dean at Run for God. Not Messenger. Not Messenger. Yeah, not, not customer service. No, Dean. Dean at, at Run, Run for, for God. God. Com. That's Got right. Got it. Yep. So, every week I share one reason why running is so awesome. And this year, uh, this year, this, this week, year, this whole year, yeah. this whole year. Yeah, I'm going to mention this this whole year. 
Um, <laughs> it is actually mood altering. Mm-hmm. Um, Certainly. You know, sometimes if you just don't feel like being around people, sometimes you just go for a run and you feel differently. Uh, if you're angry at somebody or someone, go for a run. That'll that'll help anger. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you, going for a run because you'll run it out, and eventually you'll get to the point where you're so worn out, you're like, "All right, I'm not mad." Anymore. You might be crying. I'm just tired but now. yeah, <laughs> uh, you need to think more clearly. Go for a run. You need to feel closer to God. Go for a run. There's a lot of things that we can use. I like that. Going for Mood a run. For it. I remember when I was an HR manager, and there were days as an HR manager. Sometimes people just it's it's. All HR managing is a lot of times is just one problem after another, mm-hmm. listening to one person's problem after another. And after a while, it wears you down, right? And I can remember times when I would think, I'm just going to get up from my desk. I'm going to go out in the plant. I'm just going to walk around and talk with people. And and it took 10 minutes of that, and I would completely change my mood. Mm-hmm. The running is kind of that way. It just kind of gets your mind away from everything else, puts it on something that's completely different and, and gets you away from the hustle and the bustle. So that's my, my it's mind altering. Yeah. I like that. I like that too. Yeah. Breathe the mo- in some oxygen. <laughs> the motivational thought of the week, which is attributed to many people, but I like this uh, saying, one run can change your day. Many runs can change your life. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, all right, we've got a good portion of the second month uh, of the year behind us now, right? It's crazy. Uh, it's it's crazy. We're we're things are just moving and moving moving so fast. Um, we thought 21, 2021 was going to be so much better than twenty twenty, and so far we've had more of the same for the most About part. The same, yeah. Uh, but we've for the folks change. that are in the Couch to Marathon program, it has been a great, transformative, yes. brand new, fun year, right? Yeah. So. I'm talking about you know what you just said, mood altering. It's yeah. changed a lot of people's moods from last year just to move into something different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and if I you're out there and you haven't started with us yet, um, it may not be too late. Depending on kind of where you are, and if you've not, if you're not running at all, it may be hard to start by this point. Mm-hmm. But if you're you're running a little bit, hey, join us for the Couch to Marathon program and find a whole bunch of people who think a lot like you do. Uh, Angie is is one of those folks. She's I don't think like me. <laughs> she's so encouraging and. Uh, um, and, and there's a bunch of people, there's a bunch of Angies out there. There are, there are a bunch are. of folks out there who are just constantly trying to encourage you. So if you have found it difficult to find a form of exercise, to find something that you like to do, and that you need the, the external murder motivation to keep yourself going, Run for God, Run Club is the place to be. So go out there and make sure that you review the podcast. Make sure you sign up for the YouTube videos and you're getting those when those come out. Make sure that you're paying attention. If you join Run Club and check us out on Sunday night when we're doing the Couch to Marathon program and learn a little bit more, you may learn some things there even if you've been running for a little while. And on Thursday nights, we do some crazy stuff. Sometimes we talk about stuff that's really, really in the weeds, and sometimes we talk about stuff that's Bible stuff. Right. And so it just depends on the week and what strikes me. So uh, that's... uh, What's burning inside. That's right. That's right. (laughs) So uh, so join us for all of those things. There's a lot out there for you to get involved with. So um, we just appreciate everybody out there, who you are and what you do for the club. Now, may God bless every step of every run. Go out there and shine your light. Good job, Dean. For more information about the Run for God ministry, go to runforgod.com. If you have questions about your salvation, click on the Peace with God tab. There's nothing more important. Thanks for joining us today.